So there it is, the quilt from hell. Finally done, with the exception of the binding and the quilting. Good morning everybody, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs and this is my weekly vlog number 114 for May the 13th, 2019. Hope everybody had a good weekend, hope you had a good Mother's Day for those of you that are mothers out there. And let's get right into what we're talking about today. Well, you saw right at the very beginning that uh, I have finished at least the quilt top, it hasn't been layered yet, the um, dynamic quilt as it's called. Actually the technical name of it is Roman tile. That's the official name of it. I call it the quilt from hell. It took a lot of work, a lot of time, and I did learn some new things about this quilt. Um, but rather than trying to hang it up behind me and having you look at it, since you can't get it all in, it is a queen size quilt, I thought I'd just make a short little video clip uh, showing the quilt and talking a little bit about it. And so here that clip is. So there it is, the quilt from hell, finally done, with the exception of the binding and the quilting. Challenge, um, to say the least, because there were things on here I've never done before. The quilt is set on point, but there aren't any Y seams, thank goodness for that. And I had to figure out the triangles that went on the edges because that wasn't in the instructions and neither were the mitered corners, but it's done and I'm done. And since it was Mother's Day this past weekend, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, um, I needed to get my mother a gift, and really, she's in a nursing home, as you know, I didn't know what to get her, so besides just chocolate, so I decided, almost at the last moment, to make her a quick wall hanging um, for her room, something she can hang, well, it is now hanging there because I've put it up for her, on her closet doors. It's actually a table runner, but it looks great as a wall hanging too. So I quickly sewed that up and uh, it does. It brings a little life to her room. And uh, I think I'll make her a second one, a little different design for the other closet door as well. But since she already has it, because I gave it to her uh, on the weekend, then uh, I just made a little quick video so you can see what it looks like. So for my mother for Mother's Day to brighten up her nursing home room, I thought I'd make this wall hanging um, that can be hung on one of her closet doors. It'll fit right down the side of it. It's actually a pattern for a small table runner, but uh, I made it into a wall hanging instead. And you can see these little pinwheels that are in here. They're kind of cute because they're th sort of three dimensional when you pop those up. And I just put a button in the center of each one and I embroidered some butterflies at the top and here at the bottom as well. So I think this will, uh, you know, brighten up a room a little bit. And, uh, you know, there isn't much more. I can get my mother for Mother's Day. I got her some chocolate. But uh, I think this will be a nice little extra for her. So as I said, I think I'll make her another one. A little different um, than that. I think, though, that particular design is really quick. But I think it could make, if you use the right colors, a really nice quilt. So that's a project for down the road as well. Maybe I'll make her a new quilt to go with that wall hanging. I don't know. We'll see. So what's uh, coming up here? Oh yeah. Okay. So no persons of interest this week. Haven't had any for quite a while. You know the drill. If you're interested, let me know. Email address is at the end of today's vlog. And we have listed down below the latest Stephen and Walter live. Yay. We did not freeze up this week. That's something new. Um, just as an aside here, I have invested in another uh, cam, webcam. Um, that'll give me three. We don't do the Stephen and Walter Live on the webcams. We do them on the iPad. In fact, I'm doing my vlog right now on an iPad, which I find very convenient, easy to do any kind of editing. And you know I don't do a lot of editing and that kind of thing. I have my new microphone plugged in here. Uh, to this as well. And I think we've got the settings right now on that. So that's great. 
but I need something a little bit more sophisticated uh, in terms of camera angles, not so much for the live shows or my vlog, but when I do the idiot quilter sequences because I would like to actually shoot uh, the sewing machine as it's working, as it's sewing, and then be able to, with a flick of a button, go back to me or to another part of my uh, sewing room to show you something. The only way I can do that is to have multiple cameras. Well, having multiple cameras isn't the difficult part. The difficult part is finding software that allows me to seamlessly switch between two cameras. Well, someone on Stephen and Walter Live yesterday, I believe it was Precy, recommended something called the Elgato. Um, streaming device and so we've done some research on this and it looks fantastic um, the price it's a little pricey but it's not that bad I think I can get the mini version for about a hundred bucks Canadian and the full version uh, with 15 bucks uh, 15 buttons I think is double that's about 199 um, but in the meantime I have ordered a second camera and I'm going to see if I what I can do with situating those two cameras with the equipment I have right now to be able to do what I want to do in my sewing room. Hopefully I will be able to get that set up and so my Idiot Quilter videos will be a little better um, once I get that set up. I've also created a backdrop so when I do the Idiot Quilters you don't have to look into Walter's workshop and see the mess that's in there. It's very simple. We just got some uh, cheapo curtains and a rod um, from our local YISC. I don't know if you know what a YISC is but it's basically a, a home where type of store that you know has stuff that's reasonably priced bordering borderlining on inexpensive um, so we went over there I picked these things up and it'll be a blue backdrop uh, now so watch that if you watch my idiot quilters uh, the next time I do an idiot quilter but as I said I'm trying to create a little more professional I guess you'd call it um, videos using a little bit more sophisticated equipment. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so the uh, link to Stephen and Walter Live is below, as is a, uh, the YouTube channel of the week. Oh, I missed the YouTube channel of the week. I'll better stick that in right here, right now. This week's YouTube channel is called Quilting Cowboy. This is a man who was a Canadian. Well, I guess he still is a Canadian, but he lives, I believe, in Southern California, and he quilts. Now, he is not hard on the eyes, ladies, because he is a former model and dancer and all kinds of things like that. But now he's a quilter and he teaches classes in quilting. I find his videos uh, fairly entertaining. He does have one that you should check out called The Ellen Show Dance Party, which has nothing to do with quilting, but has everything to do with, I think, getting on The Ellen Show. But I digress. Uh, his tutorials are fairly clear. His style is definitely very masculine. So if you're looking for some ideas for masculine quilts, then you might want to check out uh, The Quilting Cowboy. And if you're just interested in some eye candy, you may just want to check out The Quilting Cowboy's channel as well. And just to let you know, The uh, Quilting Cowboy, I watch his videos all the time. And uh, he's having a, a little, it's not a competition, but what he's asked is for quilters to send in a short little 20 second kind of video clip uh, stating that they are a quilter and something about where they're from. So I have done one and I have sent that off to him and he sent me back an email letting me know that he got it. So uh, whenever he gets that compilation done, I'll let you know, I'll link up to it so you can see it. Might be kind of fun. I think he's trying to break out of the stereotype that quilters are all women. Or that, uh, or otherwise, in other words, quilters come from everywhere. It doesn't matter. Transcends boundaries of country, space, time, race, religion, that kind of thing. Whatever. Okay, um, I have the uh, listing for the. Um, oh God, let me have some coffee. Okay, I have a listing below for uh, this week's. Um, uh, photo folio scrapbook um, which is the project with iCraft so I have the last uh, no it's not the last stage of that I am a little mixed up this morning I'm sorry I don't know what's wrong with me today um, you ever had that kind of day you know nothing seems to be coming out no last week I did the last installment of the photo folio scrapbook by iCraft 
This week I'm going to be showing you the iCraft Essential 6x6 scrapbook album. Now I'm not going to take you through the process of how to put it together uh, because after seeing the last two series I'm sure they all work kind of the same way but I want you to see the uh, inside because I never showed that to you yet and as I said I did these at the crop a uh, couple of weeks ago, weekends ago, and I'm really proud of how they turned out. They're a nice little album. So I highly recommend them if you can get your hand on them because they're very inexpensive. I mean, you get two of these albums for, uh, well, here in Canada, $10.99. So that's pretty good um, price. Of course, that's just the foundation. You have to add your own papers and embellishments and all that kind of thing to it. But they go together very easily, and I think the end product is very nice and I think it would make a great gift for somebody or just to have out on your coffee table. So I am going to show you that in a moment but now let's turn our attention to what's pissing me off this week. Well I got hacked. Um, Facebook actually. Um, long story short because I discussed it yesterday on Stephen and Walter Live. Basically somebody locked me out of my own account. Uh, no way I could get back into it. Uh, Facebook is completely useless for helping you out with that kind of situation. And, well, long story short, I had to recreate my Facebook page. Now, I debated whether I should do this or not because, you know, quite frankly, and this is what's pissing me off, Facebook serves no real purpose in our society. It doesn't. Um, the only people on Facebook mostly anymore are not the young people. The young people migrated over to like Instagram and some other different types of ones. Maybe because their parents were getting onto Facebook and checking up on them. I don't know. So it's usually people that are, you know, 40 plus uh, out there that seem to be on Facebook. It's riddled with advertisements um, all over it. Uh, by the way, this is an aside. Do not order anything that you see advertised on Facebook. I'm going through a situation right now that I'll talk maybe in the future a little bit more about it where I did order something and I'm pretty much sure I got scammed um, and I should have known better that's what also pisses me off I know better but you might know but you can still get scammed but anyways I was debating whether I'd put my Facebook back up because quite frankly I don't use it a lot um, I have some of my friends family on there but I don't use it as a chatting method mainly because if I have something to say to somebody that's important, I will send them an email or give them a phone call. I'm pretty sure people don't need to know what I'm eating that night for dinner or my latest projects or things like that. That's what I have a vlog for, okay? Um, I really get tired of people who do nothing but brag on there. We've just been somewhere. We just went to this restaurant. Here's a picture of what we had to eat. This is what I just cooked tonight. Isn't it great? Here's a bottle of wine I bought. Isn't that nice? Do I really care? No, I don't care. And I don't think anybody else really cares either. Facebook also creates competition between people. I mean, someone says they've gone here, here, and here for a vacation. Somebody else now says, oh, yes, well, we're off to such and such. Oh, we went to this restaurant for dinner at night and had an elegant meal there. Yes, we know. We've been there, but we've also done this one. It's like one man upmanship all the time on Facebook. Facebook is also full of haters as well. Uh, you start making comments on there, you start putting pictures up of things you've done or people you know, and the haters do come out and they start to butcher you. And do you really need to set yourself up for that kind of fall? I don't think so. So why did I recreate my Facebook page? Because I actually have a few friends that that's their chief means of communication with me. For some reason, they think it's better to do that than by face mail or by uh, email. Now, I have to admit, there's a chat feature in Facebook, which is pretty instantaneous. Um, so if I do need to talk to somebody really quick, and I know they're on Facebook, I will often page them through the chat mode. Um, so I have done that. But overall, nobody really needs Facebook. Also, there's the whole business about um, you know security and that kind of thing and over the last year there's been lots of stuff in the news about people ripping off uh, things uh, from Facebook ripping off personal information and all this kind of stuff and face Facebook just like um, Apple just like Microsoft just like any of the great big computer companies out there uh, tech companies out there they never admit that the fault lies with them they just go silent and they offer no help 
for people whatsoever. So really, I'm pissed off at the fact that I feel a need to have Facebook because I really don't. If I had a little bit more strength, I would just say, yeah, screw it. But then you feel like you're out of the loop in this modern age of technology. And I can tell you, lately I've been feeling a little bit out of the loop as we've been trying to set up some new technology in our house as well. There's been a lot of cursing and swearing. I guess we are slaves to technology, and I guess that's what pisses me off as well. You know, I said to Walter the other day, let's just move to a deserted island in a cabin off the grid and just take books and just spend the rest of our lives sitting there looking at nature reading a book and not have any connection with technology yeah that's not going to happen because in spite of what I just said I am hooked on technology just like everybody else so I guess I'm pissed off at the fact that technology has its hooks in me and I had to recreate my Facebook page so be it okay moving on um, new products well <laughs> I have something that I ordered, but I don't have the rest of it yet to use. We Are Memory Keepers came out at Creativation this year with this tool that works with crickets and most electronic cutters, actually. Cricket, brother scanning cut, silhouette, that kind of thing. And it allows you to do foiling on your, I'll just say cricket for now, because that's what the machine I have. And that's great. I'm still waiting for it. It's an expensive little toy. It hasn't come yet, although it's getting close because I ordered it through my local scrapbooking store and no fault of theirs, they have to go through a big distributor in the States called Notions and Notions sucks. When it comes to supplying, they're the wholesaler, uh, supplying things to little mom and pop stores. And you've heard me mention that before, I'm sure, so I don't have to get into it again. If you're a big store like Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby, you get your stuff in no time. If you're a tiny little store, it, it can be a long, long time, if ever. Hopefully, she's going to get it. It's supposed to be coming in this latest shipment that they're processing. I know this because I figure out the pricing of what's in the store. So I sort of work for them uh, in that capacity. Um, so anyways, what came in were these. These are USB drives, and on them are iconic and alphabetic um, symbols and sets and things like that that you can use with the foil quill on your Cricut. I've taken a look at them. Um, actually, they're, uh, until I get the foil quill, I really don't know whether it was worth buying these or not. And these were pricey. I think the two of these ended up costing me with tax about 40 bucks. Um, but I figured in for a penny and for a pound, when I, a new product comes out, I like to buy everything that goes with it. That's just me, the way I am. A little obsessed, I guess. So I have these now. So hopefully in another week or two, I will actually have the device and the foil to try these out. And if so, I'll do a video showing you what these are supposed to do. So that's the only thing new I've got this week. Okay, so book review of the week. Okay, this is a book, it's called Paper Crafts. It's by a publishing company that no longer exists called Crafts Magazine Presents Paper Crafts. 185 great projects for parties and gifts. 64 fabulous gift wraps, party on a budget, quick invites and favors. Uh, this was a special issue. Uh, 59 easy decorations for all occasions. Okay, so it's a magazine style book and lots of pictures of lots of things and instructions for how to do all of these. Great for ideas because it's got takes, it's got cards, it's got scrapbooking, it's got party favors, all kinds of things like that. And that's probably why I bought it at the time as a, an inspiration. So it is a good book. I started looking through it again and I saw some stuff I hadn't thought about in a long time, so that's good. Um, Price-wise, Okay, what did I pay for it? Originally, according to the bottom of this, I paid $23.25 Canadian. It's also listed at $14.95 US. Wow, what a disparity. Uh, that's not the right word. What a disparity between our two countries in terms of prices on things like magazines. Just ridiculous. However, I digress. I went looking up, looked looking for this on Amazon.ca and Amazon.com. And here's the bad news. It's not available on them. 
in used or new form. I did a search on the internet looking for this. I did not have a lot of look, luck. As I said, this company, um, Crafts Magazine, no longer exists. So why am I telling you about it besides the fact that it's a great book? If you want to get it, good luck, okay, finding it. You might, though, find it in back issues of magazines in your library. You might find it uh, in a used bookstore, something like that. You might find it at a garage sale. Just keep your eyes open uh, for it. I have no idea. Um, I am willing to sell my copy of it. Let's start the bidding at about $500, shall we? Yeah, if anybody offered me $500 for this, I'll personally deliver it to your door. Okay, just saying. Okay, so anyways, it is a good book. But, you know, there are a lot of these kind of magazines out there. And if you can get past the advertising that's inside of them, because they usually have a lot of advertising, uh, leaf through them at your newsstand. Uh, you'll get some good ideas, I'm sure, from it. In fact, don't say I told you to do it, but you know, as long as I don't catch you, if you see something in here you really like, take your camera out and take a picture of it. Well, that's kind of nasty and illegal, isn't it? Um, yeah, you didn't hear that from me. Okay, so sorry that I couldn't find it for you, but it's a good book. All right, moving on. Okay, so I showed you these last week. These are the 6x6 six Essential Albums by iCraft. So I've done a video to show you what they look like inside and talk a little bit about them. So that's going to go right here. So this week, what I want to focus on is another iCraft album, and it's referred to as the Essential 6x6 album, and this is the packaging for it. And out of this kit, you get two albums. Now, I'm not really going to show you how to put one of these together. I'll mention a few features of it that make it different from some of the other ones that I've been doing in the series. However, this one is very much like the um, scrapbook album, the memory album that I did in the first um, episode of this uh, DIY kind of thing. Um, they've made some improvements in this one in the kit. And I'm going to start with this first one. They come in black cardstock or craft cardstock. The black craft stock tends to be a little lighter weight, I think, than the craft. Uh, when I was making these two albums, I did notice that. Now, the thing about these albums, I'll show you up here on the top, is you have six inserts, six pages, and these give you 12 pages, one on each side. They have included chipboard, however, for the covers and for the spine, and this makes this a much more substantial album than the scrapbooking, uh, the memory scrapbook album. Um, now, they may be coming out with chipboard for that as well, because this company, one thing that they're doing, they're taking suggestions from their consumers, and they are improving the kits. They're still relatively inexpensive, $10.99 for this kit. That's about the standard price for all of their kits, at least uh, from the source that I get them from. And um, you really can't beat the price uh, for these. And with the addition of the, of the uh, chipboard in here, they make a really nice album. Now, of course, it doesn't come with any embellishments. And one of the things that I noted when I picked this up, I thought this part on the front came with the album, which made it a little bit... Um, you know, made it stand out from the other albums. Well, I was wrong. They don't say anywhere on here that that's not included, that piece, uh, but apparently this is uh, an additional kind of piece that you can buy and then put to the front of it, but it doesn't tell you that on the packaging. So this is a little misleading, and I mentioned it to the uh, store owner of Class Act where I bought it because she's in constant communication with this company because she gets their products directly from them, and... Uh, you know, they may want to change the packaging of this because really somebody uh, might buy this because they love this front and they're going to be really disappointed when they don't get this piece in the, you know, the package. It might cause the store owner a little bit of grief. People might come back and complain. So here's the album finished. I'm going to show you both of these albums that I did. This one 
I used, uh, of course, it doesn't come with any embellishments. These are things I had in my stash. However, this little wreathy part on here, that is actually one of their products as well, iCraft. Um, they make uh, a lot of laser cut uh, wood pieces, um, which are very delicate. You have to be careful when you pull them off the packaging. Again, a slight problem with your packaging. These are stuck on with double-sided tape and if you pull them up from one end some of the finer pieces can break off so I found it's best to be very careful when you're taking them off I kind of pry underneath them with a little pokey tool and that helps uh, this part on the top that's a Tim Holtz element but the background papers I've used in here and on the inside are all from the same company iCraft there was a promo if you bought six of the kits you got a free paper pad as well a 12 by 12 paper pad and that paper uh, pad retails for thirty dollars so that was kind of a bonus uh, one thing again on the side here that i've discovered was that their 12 by 12 paper pack was actually 11 and a quarter by 11 and three quarters uh, apparently though the company has caught that problem and um, now they're rat, uh, fixing up the problem with that so their future paper pads will be truly 12 by 12. Didn't really bother me, but if you were buying that paper pad to create a scrapbook album, a 12 by 12 scrapbook book album, that might be uh, a little disconcerting to you when the background papers are not measuring exactly 12 by 12. But I was cutting them up. So you can see I've used them throughout this uh, album. The other pieces that are on here come from my stash. Um, this little wood piece here, that's an iCraft one, as are these leaves and these little flowers. I love their little flowers they're really nice they're individuals they have long wire stems which you can use or cut off do whatever and in a moment i will show you how i actually use them when i cut those stems off um, but they're uh, they're great and i made this little tag this is still their background uh paper and you'll notice here these stems i just went through the hole of the tag and i twisted them up and made a little loop here on the top so that's one way you can use the wires on the flowers um, I use them here now the elements that you see in here in these little pockets these are graphic 45 so it's a mixture of iCraft and uh, graphic 45 and in here again I just created lots of elements that you can sort of hide photos in um, when I make albums I like the embellishing process and that's why you will find that my albums are maybe not as conducive to journaling and to to photographs because um, I'll never put pictures in these these this is the final product um, somebody asked me what do you do with the albums when you make them I put them on a shelf and let them collect dust yeah a bit of a shame isn't it um, I probably should give them away um, but I'm also attached to them a little bit. You know, I put a lot of work into this, and I really like this one. I think it turned out neat. We'll see. Anyways, I do put in little cards like this, and they usually have a space on the back or even on the front sometimes where you could add a photo or journaling. And this little clip just comes off, little binder-like clip. Uh, that's, I believe, a Tim Holtz element. These little butterflies, again, are from iCraft, some of their little laser-cut wood pieces and more of their flowers. Same here. This is another set of their flowers, which is kind of fun and neat and unique because you don't see these often in a craft store. You see maybe flowers on this style, but not these. These have the long stems and the whole bit. And you can see what I did down here is I just curled up the stem. They're covered in florist tape. Um, and just to give it an extra little element, more of the butterflies. And in here I did something very similar. I just, um, you know, got them sort of gave them a little crinkle. I wrapped them around a, a thin paper piercer to give them the little cur curly look. These butterfly, this butterfly is not from iCraft. This, I think, was a Prima uh, embellishment. More of the flowers here, and you use them in combination. I, I really like them because they're very versatile. They're, um, they're individual. The leaves are individual. The flowers are individual. They're inexpensive. Um, I think they were about four to six dollars for a large size package of these uh, more places to tuck in cards things like that some more tags these come out from under here here I coiled the little wire stems and stuck them underneath um, another one of their wood chip pieces at the back here I did some fussing cutting of uh, 
graphic 45 element and more of the flowers and again just more of the same throughout so there are places here that a person could put pictures in and some journaling um, this is the last page again a graphic 45 element and on the edge a graphic 45 element and these also help me to hold down my ribbon as an enclosure and uh, this was just some lacy ribbon I had in my stash and there we go I really like this album this was fun to make I enjoyed the process and um, the final product I'm really loving loved it so much I made a second one well the kit came with two and this one I uh, used Tim Holtz products for the most part in this um, because I've got a lot of Tim Holtz paper pads as well so here you can see I use some of his uh, paper dolls on this this is not a Tim Holtz element this was a laser cut I'm not sure what company made that um, I just uh, darkened it a little bit it's a piece of chipboard um, with some ink and I use some Wink Costella on this to give it a little bit of shimmer uh, as well on the back side I used one of those people and on the back here I grouped a bunch of them together and again they serve a dual purpose they're an embellishment and they also help to reinforce my ribbon now I use Gorilla Glue a lot uh, with both of these albums I'm loving the clear Gorilla Glue um, it's about nine bucks for a bottle of it but it goes a long way because you don't need that much it dries relatively quickly and it'll hold down anything it is my new adhesive of choice now when I put in the background papers in both these albums I did not use uh, Gorilla Glue glue I used double-sided tape and that worked fine except one thing that I found and I'll show you how these albums are constructed essentially you have this one large piece where's the cover you have this one large piece and this is your spine and your two covers front and back and it has these little flaps and they're already pre-scored they give you two piece, three pieces of chipboard two that are cut big enough to lay inside here for the covers and one for the spine and you just essentially put them in fold over these pieces on either side and it seals it all up and you've got your cover for your book with the black cardstock double-sided tape has no problem sticking that down but for some reason I have found in spots and it didn't always happen but with the craft uh, the double-sided tape would not hold as well it would loosen up on corners or things like that so in that case I use some Gorilla Glue to hold it down um, that was more in the construction of the album when you're putting in the background papers I found that the double-sided tape seemed to work fine but you could use any kind of adhesive that you like now these pages on the inside are hinged so basically in here there's a score line along this little flap and you just fold it and you stick them in and you just line them up one right after the other and they all fit in there quite nicely very easy album to assemble okay um so in here I did similar things that I did in the first album um, using mostly Tim Holtz elements these aren't these flowers um, are not Tim Holtz they are um, Prima I believe they were Prima but I used his paper dolls in here and I cut out elements from his paper pads you know to use as journaling cards photos whatever I tried to get a little adventuresome here with the way that I created tuck-ins for example this came from one of his paper pads I have no idea who these people are found relatives is what uh, Tim Holtz refers to them as so I cut them out I went around the edges of everything with uh, black memento ink uh, just to give them a little pop and to grunge it up a little bit because that's really Tim Holtz's style and I like that style some more little things that I cut out from his paper pad so these would be for journaling or for pictures or whatever and I used in some of them to extend the little flap that these cards went under I would I put on some of his paper dolls I just glued them to one edge and that just you know adds another dimension to it in here in this one I'm actually using the paper dolls the way I stuck it down I just put a little glue on the side and a little bit on the bottom holds it in and you can hold a little card in there I got some adventuresome here I decided to make this little 
interactive elements. So these pieces are on a brad, like a little mini book. So it could have pictures and that kind of thing on those. Uh, here, I made another tuck-in pocket, a couple of little cards that I cut from the paper. These were not pre-made. I just cut them from the paper, rounded the corners, stuck them in. This one I got a little fancy. I used sort of a belly band effect here, cut from the paper. So you've got this little insert that you could put a picture on, put journaling on, whatever, slides in there. And I'm using the paper dolls again to, you know, keep this from dropping out the bottom. This one is some Tim Holtz material. Let me pull these guys out. This is glued to the background paper, but what I took was a square of the paper and I covered it. I had some of these six by six inch squares of Tim Holtz fabric that he had come out with at one time several years ago. Um, they're just little pieces. So I used those to cover the piece of cardstock. So it's an additional background, but it's made of fabric. So, you know, it gives a little bit, a uh, little bit different textured effect. And I used some of his ribbon and I just tied a little bow. And for mounting a card on here, I put this in with some of the paper dolls. Um, so you could put a picture on here. Uh, you could put journaling on here or a picture on here and it just slips in there. Again, the paper dolls are holding that element in and then it all fits in there held in that piece. Here's a little like flip up album within the album. Again, I just cut various sizes of the paper. I made these little tabs. I just used my tab punch, um, used Tim Holtz paper, punched these out, glued them on and they're just little tabs for lifting. So when someone who's looking through your album would know, oh yeah, I should lift these up and see other things that you may have put in. Uh, here, just a little side pocket for holding a couple of cards. And here again, I'm using the paper doll as a little clip. And here's another area in here that a picture could go on. Um, and similar, I made a little corner pocket here. So there's a little insert card in that corner pocket. And then another smaller insert card in behind the paper dolls. And then finish it up here, another tag pocket on the back. And I've already shown you the back and the spine and there's the cover. And again, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Uh, the ribbon was just from my stash and uh, serves as the enclosure. So there you have it. Um, really, really great value. Two albums from one kit and for $10.99 Canadian, I don't think you can go wrong. So. In my next series, um, I'm going to take another one of the kits and I'm going to put it together. And I think I might do what they call the exploding box. So we'll see how that is then. And that brings us to uh, events in the past week. Well, of course, I've already mentioned that it was Mother's Day on Sunday. But they did have a special um, Mother's Day event on Friday at my mother's nursing home. And we, Walter and I went to that. And it was a Hawaiian luau is what they build it as. And they had decorated uh, this particular room where they are holding the event uh, with, you know, very colorful, um, like pictures of palm trees and little flowers and things that all dangled down. And they had uh, nice tables all set up with, uh, you know, tablecloths and some Hawaiian like uh, napkins and they had margarita glasses. And yes, we had margaritas. Now, the margaritas were mock margaritas, but nevertheless, they were kind of tasty. I think they used that margarita mix that you can buy in the gallon drum kind of a thing and mixed it with, um, I think they might have mixed it with Sprite or something like that. It was fizzy um, and very sweet, very, very sweet. And they also serve uh, everybody um, individual little upside down pineapple bunt cakes um, with uh, they had some ice cream in a cup with some edible oil product, uh, whipped topping on the top of it with little sparkles and things. It was very festive. Uh, again, really, really sweet for sure. Um, they had entertainment. Oh yes, they had entertainment. They had a guy playing a steel drum and singing. He had one of those electronic uh, music boxes uh, doing background music while he played the steel drum and sang. Uh, it was very Caribbean, which 
kind of mixing your two themes. But nevertheless, I guess it's a tropical theme, put it that way. Um, it was loud, really loud. Yes, I know um, a lot of the people in the nursing home ha are hard of hearing. If they weren't deaf, though, before they went in for this, they were, would be deaf after it, I can tell you, because he was loud. But anyways, uh, my mother seemed to ha enjoy herself, and there was another lady sat at our table with us, and my, she was remarkable. She has a birthday coming up in about a week's time. It'll be her 100th, 101st birthday, and she did not look a day over 80 seriously um this lady was well put together for being 101 she was in a wheelchair but she seemed to be able to get around in the wheelchair on her own um she her daughter was supposed to come but they couldn't get a place for her or something like this i'm not really sure what happened there was some confusion anyways the staff brought her order and said you know because she would have been sitting by herself kind of a thing if you know mind if she joined us and we said no fine and so her and my mother did try to carry on a conversation um i tried to talk to her as well and uh, she was definitely with it very coherent in the whole bit the unfortunate thing was this music this steel drum i hate steel drums um I could not hear what she was saying. And so, not to be rude or anything to her, I would just try to try to read her face as she's telling me things and I would kind of smile and agree to this and that, but I have no idea what she was talking about whatsoever. Um, but anyways, the steel drums just kept going and going and going and going. I mean, my idea of hell, stick me in a room with steel drums and bagpipes. I'll just bring a gun and blow my brains out right at that point. Boom, boom. Yeah, because I hate both of those. I'm sorry if you like them, but I hate them uh, with a passion. Just great on my nerves. But anyways, my mother seemed to have a good time. So that was great. We did that. Um, and yeah, I know my sister went over on Sunday. My sister worked all weekend because it's a, she works for a florist. And so Mother's Day is a biggie. Um, so I think she went over on Sunday because the flower shop was closed on that day. And uh, she probably took my mother some flowers and things like that. <laughs> Go figure, okay, uh, where you get those. So, and mom overall is okay. She was on, we went over on Tuesday before the Friday and she was in bed. And I said to her, uh-oh, I said, you're not feeling well. And she was complaining about a pain in her left side. Well, you don't have anything vital in your left side. So we didn't think it was too serious. We never know when she does this kind of thing whether or not she truly is not feeling well or it's her trying to get attention. We don't know. She's done this many times to us. And many of those times, it's been, quite frankly, a fake situation. So, you know, in the case of a little boy cr crying wolf. But then you never know. So I asked her if the nurse practitioner had seen her. And not at that point, but there was a staff member in my mother's room at the time that uh, I was asking about this. And she says, actually, she's coming in this afternoon. According to my mother, though, the, staff, uh, the nurse practitioner never came to her and she was fine. Uh, in fact, when we were leaving on the Tuesday, she said, well, yeah, she was feeling better. Which makes me think that mm, this might have been more up here than anything else. But never know. That's the thing. And... Uh, so anyway, by Friday, she was fine. Um, in fact, I phoned her on the Wednesday, the day after, and I said, you up? And I said, oh yeah, I'm fine, no problem. I said, you're going down for meals? Oh yeah, yeah. So all's well, well with that. Okay, so what's coming up? Well, this next weekend coming up here in Canada is a long weekend, although for me as a retired person, every weekend's long. Um, it's Victoria weekend. Uh, Victoria weekend was established when we were a British colony. It honors the birthday of Queen Victoria. She's dead. Long gone. Quite a time ago. Long time ago. Over 100 years ago. Anyways, we still have this. Here in Canada, though, it's really more the official start of the summer. It's when people often start getting out, putting in their flowers in their gardens. Um, if they have a cottage, going up to the cottage, opening it up for the season, getting the boats in the water, all that kind of thing. Um, so, it is the first long weekend of the summer uh, kickoff kind of a thing. So I don't know what we're going to do. 
Um, lately, the weather has not been that pleasant. It's been seasonably cooler than it should be for this time of year and wet. It has been wet. As I speak right now, it's raining outside. So it's not been that nice. If the weekend's nice next weekend, maybe we'll go down to our little annual pilgrimage to a little town called Warkworth, which is, you know, you blink, you miss it. But they have something called Art in the Park, or as Walter likes to call it, Fart in the Park. Um, it's pretty Mickey Mouse, quite frankly. It's local artisans basically selling their wares, a lot of jewelry, um, some art, um, some decent art. Uh, some other quirky art like if you want to buy a shovel or a pitchfork that's been painted up as a home decoration then this is the place to go and get it it's also a cheese factory down in that area as well that makes really good cheese so you know we might stop in there and there's another little town called Campbellford Campbellford is a little place where I was born my family all come from this little town and there's a great um, fabric store right in the downtown core of Campbellford that's um, I wouldn't mind going to if it's nice if it's miserable out like this screw it we're going to be doing that because I'm not walking around in the in, in the rain it just makes things miserable and we're talking about a an hour and a half drive away from here not that far but a bit of a way so you want nicer weather also this little town of Warkworth has some quirky little stores in it too um, it's kind of touristy uh, in a sort of a backwoods way. If you're from Warkworth, I'm sorry. It's lovely. Yeah, it is. It actually is. It's nice. It's just I'm I'm a little bit more cityfied, I guess, than that. Whatever. That sounds snotty. So that's what we might be doing next weekend. So that's about it for me today. Hope you have a nice weekend. I hope you have a nice week. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.